Hey. I like it. You like it? You like this car? Can I buy for you? Hi guys, so today's review of the Mercedes GLB begins. How may I help you? Oh, what can I do Mercedes. for you? Disable voice command. Can you say that again, please? Cancel. So today's review of the Benz GLB 200 begins uh, right here in the back seat so you can see here I've got my two daughters strapped in one in the second row one in the third row and we shall start with uh, what has to be my a big selling point of this car which is the fact that it has four isofix points two in the middle row two in the back row now uh it's not about you know you see the thing is that some people say hey look we don't need four uh most people most families won't need four isofix points but that's not the point of it at all the idea is that you have a choice you have that flexibility to decide which isofix uh anchor to use at any time so let's say like in this situation right now i can put two, my two daughters along one row and i can sit here and lounge about okay or my wife can sit here and attend to the kids while i'm driving in front or if i'm going for my ikea shopping trip this seat can come down to load a long object while the the two kids sit at the side so you see the thing is that it it gives you that flexibility to reconfigure your interior uh, seating arrangements while without compromising the safety of your family and I have to say it's quite comfortable here in the third row so like right now uh, I am seated okay this is in this position this is there's a good lean angle here okay uh, I'm 170 centimeters tall there is still what two fingers of headroom above me although my hair can actually feel the top of it lah. okay but I still got a headrest here uh, and let me just bring this up right here where I am uh, I have still got okay thigh support is forget about thigh support but there's still leg room here that it's not an uncomfortable place to be in my daughter here is hardly in a claustrophobic space although because of this uh, rather thick D pillar here unavoidable for structural integrity uh, it, it can feel a little dark inside this uh, this slot here is obviously for the tonneau cover and here there is a tray for you to stow away say your phone and right here there is a USB-C port uh, in case you want to charge your mobile device there's a clip here which allows you to to uh, hold to to hold the safety belt in place so that it does not impede with the folding function of uh, of the seats similarly here you can have this seat belt clipped here so that so that you know when you get in and out of the third row this belt doesn't get in your way okay so right now at the back here there are no dedicated aircon blowers at the back but uh, with this part, this uh, with this center part armrest down, uh, I've got the I've got I've got air blowing from the rear blowers as well as the middle blowers. So there's a, quite a bit of cool air that makes its way back here to the third row. So I would certainly need that. You cannot, hmm, Jen? Okay. Hmm. We'll go to the middle row to join my elder one. Oh, wow. 
500 bucks. You save about 1000 plus. It should work out cheaper for me. 4000. 215. Even more. It's worth for 200 plus. 400 bucks of savings. So now here at the back, let me just readjust the uh, the seating position here. Uh, now uh, we've got good. Rec this one has reclined adjustment, so this is the furthest back it will go. All right, let me just bring this up for a bit, and uh, it's got an armrest here with uh, with pop up cup holders. Okay, pop up cup holders, and. Um, and let me see what else so here it's a much better uh, place to sit okay the uh, the seat cushion itself is still a little bit short partly because uh well they have to balance the seven seater capacity on, on a relatively short cabin and plus the fact that they are also keeping in mind that this uh people who drive a glb most likely would have a lot of young kids who have younger kids and as a result they need uh, the benches to be shorter so that you know when they're seven years old eight years old when they're just graduating from their booster seat uh, they will be able to sit without their legs you know dangling forwards all right so nothing of nothing major of note here it's all surrounded by very um, uh, hardy plastics okay nothing spectacular here we'll go check out the front now if you have watched my review of the A-Class, you will find that this cabin it follows roughly the same arrangement. Of course, there are certain styling cues that uniquely distinguish it, uh, give it a bit of a baby G-Class kind of feel. This metal bar here, for instance, establishes a more, a more macho, a more robust look to the dashboard but the, the elements remain uh, entirely familiar so you see these central mounted aircon vents for example this row of aircon switches uh well still that free play when you when you when you move it but not so much as before this uh this row this uh this dual screen setup here uh, once again looks impressed very impressive indeed for this price range but certainly when you when you sit here and you look into this so you've got the shape of the steering wheel like this but because the screen is rectangular uh, this steering actually obscures a part of this this part of the screen and this part of the instrument cluster so it's not a perfect view uh of this of this assembly here all right uh but the rest of the elements we are, you would have seen all right how all these controls work in many 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 other mercedes reviews that how may i help you can you say that again please in many other Benz reviews that uh that there's no point to go any further on of course i will have to add that cancel thank you all right so but i i do have to add that uh this car does have auto braking it does have advanced driver assist features so i'm seeing the uh the screen here detecting you know uh showing me what's one 100 meters ahead 50 meters ahead and so forth so here um you've got this nice compartment here okay compartmentalized so you can use this as a cup holder um you can you can store away your phone but there's no wireless charging tray here as well usb-c port here uh, this touchpad allows interaction with the screen the screen does have touch face functionality yes you want to be in the video as well mm. okay so here you've got uh so the touchpad here uh and this this uh this pad here serves no uh, control function purpose is just uh, something here for you to rest your palm on so that you can control this pad okay so here this center console box is deep but it's narrow all right uh, selection of materials is is uh, well 
okay so we've got soft touch plastics here but below eye level the grade the grade of plastics be, uh, begin to get progressively harder so certainly not 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 very very impressive for the for the um for the price that you your car seat is dirty later we go home clean okay later we go home clean huh certainly not very impressive for the price point uh yeah but that has been what we've been that, but that's what we've been saying about uh, the recent generation Mercedes cars for the longest time from the A class to the CLA and now here the GLB but what I do really like here is that it as much even though this is this setup what would you like to do cancel even though this setup is very clearly based on the A class platform they have put this these differentiating touches here to give give it you know Can a you slightly say? different um look and feel so like you see here even the door the way the door card is built you've got this this metal this well it's a metal finish over a, a cover but it gives a you know a very chunky feel almost uh, reminds us of the uh, of the G class all right the way this the the the, the height of this of this door card here so we will pop the uh, electric uh, boot lid all right okay so you've got a uh, remote release and here you can see well with the third row up uh, there's very little uh, luggage room available but this this is nice okay underneath here is a space to stow away the tonneau cover so with this here one touch bring this down and uh, you have this long loading uh, loading floor there all right of course if you were to push the middle row seat back all right you've got a rather a relatively seamless uh, floor all right and here at the back you can see this this section is compartmentalized there's a hook here to hang your barang here as well here's the light the luggage compartment light and here you've got a 12 volt socket all right you've got powered closing Now, styling-wise, I really like what Mercedes has done with the GLB. So, you know, in a sea of, you know, all these uh, very supposedly sleek-looking uh, coupe-imitating SUVs, right? Here, we have something that is, you know, very proud of its SUV body style, all right? That it goes back to, you know, more, a more traditional SUV proportions, all right? Back when SUVs were all... You know four-wheel drives you know it's all very boxy very upright it gives you the impression that that you can take this uh vehicle anywhere not that i recommend it even though it's just a gla underneath in terms of its uh running gear but it it, it looks so much different compared to everything outside and 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 that is uh that is the nice thing about it and i really like this red uh red color shade from mercedes uh it look this this red really looks best in their coupe models but here in the glb uh looks good as well and this this being the this the glb 200 so it has th this uh this at this uh adventure themed body style that gives it and that further enhances its rugged appearance uh although i will have to say that this this uh this curved side mirror parts bin side mirror obviously it's uh it's a bit of a misfit uh i would have preferred to have a more a, squ a more square a more boxy side mirror to complement the the to better fit the overall look of the car because you look at you look at the front end you look at the front design the lights the front grille everything follows a boxy a squarish 
theme right it's uh it this car really looks and feels like an offshoot of the g-class it has it, it it looks like it has the g-class dna in it okay so uh yeah i mean I, I, honestly honestly speaking uh it's a very simple very unpretentious design uh yeah i i, I just like it I, I like it a lot okay so how does this thing drive well let me just get one thing out of the way if you're looking for a sporty and engaging driving experience you're looking at the wrong place but uh i will have to say that the glb drives competently this uh 1.3 liter engine certainly gives you more than enough uh pace to keep up with uh, cut and thrust city traffic so certainly well not a not a what well, you call it not a trailblazing engine in terms of performance but certainly not one that uh, that leaves you stranded in a drag race uh, the handling is surprisingly competent so even though there is that unavoidable amount of body roll because as a result of the combination of a comfort oriented suspension as well as its tall ride height um, it's uh, it it grips itself well around corners so if you carry a not insane amount of speed there is a usable amount of uh, of mechanical grip available that uh, that gives you uh, the confidence to gently squeeze yourself around the bed all right uh, but of course the the thing about the mercedes mfa platform, how may i help you you know the what the, would you like the to the do thing, cancel the thing about the benz compact car platform in its previous generation almost all of them are ridiculously uncomfortable too stiff even in what we call comfort suspension but this one the setup here is is uh is well is is definite there's a if the ride is uh is pleasingly supple okay so uh it does not bounce you about it and that is the right kind of setup given the brief of this car which don't forget this is targeted at uh for family use so uh, the, I find the, the driving, the, the dynamic setup of this car, even though it is you know, it's not a, not something you would want to have to enjoy on a on a B road blast at Gautong Jaya, entirely adequate for its purpose. In simply put, there is nothing at all offensive about the way the GLB drives. It is, uh, it is a very pleasant day-to-day -day car i would say that buying one of these makes a much more attractive proposition than the gla because the gla all right you look at it's 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 uh you know it's sleek you know us crossover kind of profile every other car maker has something like that but this the GLB, this is something quite unique in terms of styling and packaging in the premium segment. This And this is a, a, a kind of car that BMW will not be able to pull off because it wouldn't fit the brand image. Imagine an X2 where, where it looks like a junior X7. People will look at it and have a good laugh. Which is why when BMW made the X2, they have to call it, you know, the sports activity coupe, and and that that totally um, it make, makes it a, a, a less practical, no, not much more desirable alternative to the X1. Where is this? This gives you something quite different from the GLA. It is at once a more practical choice and at the same time a more unique choice so nothing to shout about in the way it drives and in all honesty the 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 interior build is no different from your a-class 
or your CLA but uh, if you if you have the need for seven seats all right and you like and you know this this old-fashioned uh, you know upright boxy SUV styling appeals to you then the GLB really is something it's uh, it's worth looking at purely on those grounds What do I do? What do I do? What am I doing?